insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 141. Nope. Your no. <laughs> that was last week. This is episode 142, Your Health Triangle. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen. Hi, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I wanted to do a read-through, and you flubbed even the title. Okay, leave it be. Okay, so anyway, how you doing this week, Maddie? Fine, I guess. You guess, huh? Just, Why uh, do you always guess? Why aren't you sure? I don't know. You should be more sure of yourself, more self-confident. We should do a podcast on that. Pretty sure we have. Okay, we should do another one on that, because apparently the last one didn't work so well. Pretty sure we've done at least two. Okay. But whatever. All right, we need to be sure of ourselves moving forward. Anyway, I got a shot. You got a shot? Yep. What kind of shot? Shot in the arm or like a drink shot? Uh, You're too young shot. for drink shots. A shot in the arm. Shot in the arm, yeah. How'd that feel? Uh, pretty bad, and my doctor lied to me, saying that, oh, it's just a tiny little needle. No, it went all the way through my arm. Right, right through. They <laughs> just impaled your arm, right? <laughs> well, it went pretty deep into my arm. But surprisingly, my arm's not sore, so. Well, then what are you complaining about? Well, you take some, you lose some, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Did you expect it not to hurt? Did you honestly expect it not to hurt? I thought it was going to be a tiny pinch. A tiny? That's well, they tell you that just so you don't flinch. Well, it's because, like, the booster was a tiny pinch, and I thought this was going to be the same. Well, when they pull it out, and it's actually the size of a javelin, and they're going to stick it in your arm, you know. I didn't see it. Mommy even saw it, and she didn't, and she wasn't going to tell me until it was done and over with. I can only imagine the look on Mommy's face, like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you can probably ask her. <laughs> Anyway, you survived. Yeah, and that's not what we're talking about right no, now. No, it is not. So today we're talking about our health triangle, and uh, this topic also coincidentally spawned from my uh, health class. Yeah, we're doing like a whole podcast series from your health class. That I always write, <laughs> and possibly and host. host. Good for you. <laughs> so, what is our health triangle? Why is it important? And how can we maintain our health triangle? We'll answer these questions and much more as we talk about balancing key aspects of our lives on this episode of Insights in the Teens. Okay. But before we do that, I'm going to um, ask you guys to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of the podcast that are listed as Insights in the Teens. We have video versions of the podcast listed as Insights in the Things. We're available on all popular podcast services, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. Uh, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights in the things podcast. We're on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights in the things. Or you can get us on our all this and more on our official website at www.insightsinthethings.com. Okay, good job rushing through that. You ready? Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. All right. So first of all, what is the health triangle? And this and uh the and this comes to us from my mindmypeelings.com. So, the health triangle, also known as the wellness triangle, is a measure of our body's overall well-being. It is a representation of your body's efficiency and balance. The health triangle consists of three sides that contribute to your overall wellness. 
When you are at the optimal state, all three are in a balanced state, and your body is at its most efficient. The three sides that make up the health triangle and contribute to overall health are physical health, mental and emotional health, and social health. When being taught about your health, you may have only ever heard of physical health. You might have even you might have been told that nutrition, exercise, and sleep were the priorities of maintaining our health. You might have heard a bit about mental health, but it may not register as a priority for you. Your social health might be something completely new, or might encompass areas of your well-being you might not often consider. So when I first, when you first brought this topic up to me, I couldn't help but think of the only health pyramid that I was aware of was the nutrition pyramid. Mm. Clearly, this is not the nutrition pyramid. Yeah. So I've heard of obviously physical health, and I've heard of mental health, but social health is kind of a new one to me. Was it new to you? It was somewhat new. I definitely knew about physical and mental, and I guess I started learning a bit more about social one from this podcast, and I kind of had an idea of it, but when it was finally, like, brought up, like, yes, this is a form of being healthy, it kind of made sense to me, but also it wasn't something that, like, I knew of off the top of my head. Right. Well, and being rather antisocial myself, I don't think I've ever really put that much emphasis on it as being part of my overall health and wellness fair enough but physical health i've definitely heard of physical health deals with your body's ability to function normally and how well it is operating this includes your diet nutrition getting enough physical activity or exercise which clearly i don't and enough sleep to recharge for the day which i don't get that either (laughs) there are other things that impact your physical health that you might not normally think of such as your hygiene your hygiene includes taking care of your teeth, and keeping your body and hair clean, which I don't Doesn't really, really, don't, apply don't really to have you. that problem. <laughs> uh, these are also important aspects of your physical health. Now, I want to just sort of take an aside here. Um, I never really took my teeth as being uh, a particularly significant part of my physical health until I wound up getting an abscess tooth that was infected and that abscess tooth wound up causing significant health problems for me in areas that I would never have expected. You know, it eventually wound up causing a ulcer in my stomach. I had a peptic ulcer that was a bleeding ulcer and I almost died from it. So that taught me how significant that your teeth were to your health. And on another note, Uh, My brother, who had passed away a few years ago, um, he had a number of physical ailments at the time, uh, but he he was suffering from kidney failure. And they wanted to put him on the donor list to get a kidney transplant, but they couldn't because his teeth had gotten to the point where they were so unhealthy that had they put, uh, had they given him a, um, a donor kidney, In order to ensure that the body didn't reject it, they have to give you a whole bunch of uh, medication to suppress your immune system so your immune system doesn't reject the organ. Mm. And because of the condition that his teeth were in, he would have wound up getting life-threatening infections in his mouth if they gave him those suppressing medications. Mm. So, again, indirectly, it cost him his life as a result so i didn't i never put that much emphasis on him and you know silly me for not doing so so what else do we have we also have mental health so mental health focuses on your thoughts feelings and emotions stress anxiety and emotions such as anger are all encompassed under mental health it is your ability to cope with stress and problems that are a normal part of life Accepting who you are and being positive about it is also an important part of your mental health. Being aware of your thoughts, feelings, and behavior allow you to be healthy mentally. Mental health enables you to learn and develop new skills. The development of skills, behaviors, and knowledge helps you to grow as an individual. Learning increases self-confidence, awareness, and self-perception. And I think if 
if we've learned anything from this podcast, it's the importance of mental health. Yeah. Uh, it affects every aspect of our life, whether it's anxiety, fear, depression, happiness. You know, if you don't have a balanced mental health regimen and ways to cope with this, because life is full of stress, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're you're a teenager. You deal with probably a dozen different type of stresses every day of your life going to school. Yeah. My professional life, I deal with all kinds of different stresses. And every day, it's a different kind of stress that you deal with. And if you can't handle those stresses, they tend to build up. They wear down. You start to fatigue physically from it. Like, what are some of the symptoms that you run into when you're not balancing those that mental aspect of your health? What are some of the problems that you tend to run into? I guess when I'm not able to really balance all the stresses um i normally lose control of my emotions is probably the biggest thing i normally break down and feel like i can't do anything and that basically the stress ends up taking over me and my emotion and i can't hold back my emotions at that point and they basically take over my logical train of thought yeah, and I find that when I've had a really stressful day at work or a couple of stressful days at work, by the time the weekend gets here, it's like it didn't even happen. Like, I, I don't get that chance to recharge. I'm still wound up going into the weekend, worrying about a project or a problem or whatever it is. And the weekend really is there for you to unwind, recharge, and get ready for the next set of days to go through. And I wind up going back to work on a Monday and I just, I feel physically exhausted at that point. So that's usually how it manifests with me. And then I get irritable. I mean, you've seen me irritable. Uh, I don't want to be bothered by people. I get snappy. I don't have any patience for people. Oh, wait, that's me on a regular day. I'm even worse when I'm stressed out. (laughs) Yeah, nice. (laughs) And ironically, that affects my social health sometimes too. Mm. So... You know, social health encompasses our relationships with others, whether that's family, friends, peers, or coworkers. Social health measures the way a person reacts to people in their environment. It includes how they can communicate, care for others, seek and lend support, and the ability to make and keep relationships. These relationships could occur at home, school, work, or in social gatherings. What do you think you do... Or, or not even, don't even let me go there. Let me, let me ask right off the bat, how do you think your social health is at this point in time? Well, I'd say, well, it depends. Um, I have a really good, I definitely think my social health thrives on my family because I have a good relationship with all of you and... A lot of the time when I am feeling, I'm not feeling too healthy in the other areas, you guys are normally there to help out. Um, So I have a pretty good, um, I'm pretty good with you guys. Um, I'd say I'm also pretty good with my friends for the most part. Um, But I'm also the kind of person that really doesn't want to talk to other people that I don't have to talk to. Or that I don't really want to talk to. Right. And I think I think the one the biggest casualty I think from COVID right now for all of us is really that social health side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we lost almost almost a million people have have died now in the United States as a result. Um, so there's certainly that, but I think the vast majority of the people in the country and around the world have really been affected by this lack of social interaction. And I think people tend to take it for granted, the how important that is. Um, you look at mommy. You know, mommy is a very social person. She has different circles that she uh, socializes in. She has different friends that she sees. She, you know, we have friends of hers that we go see. So for mommy to, to have been withdrawn you know, kind of against her will because of this, it's it's had an effect on her. And we see it now, you know, just starting to get back into the convention scene. We went to a convention last weekend and a few weeks back that people are really just, you know, they're so 
pent, there's so much pent up socialization that you get a very different vibe from people. Now, do you, do you find that it, you know, cause you did a whole year remote schooling. Do you find that the kids treated you differently or that the kids were acting differently when you were able to go back into the classroom? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I have seen, um, more people trying to talk with each other. Um, and certain people talk to me that didn't really talk to me all that much. Um, when school was, when, um, school was going on before, um, I've made, um, I'm now friends with people who I kind of just knew, but never really talked to them. Um, and it's kind of interesting how that ended up working. Yeah, and that's kind of what we've seen on the convention scene, too. The couple of vendors that I interacted with last week, they were, even if you didn't buy anything from them, they were just happy and pleasant and glad to be out and interacting with customers again. Granted, a large portion of that is the fact that this is how they make their, their living. Um, so the, there was this one particular vendor, I mean, I bought a... a picture off of him for $15 and you would think the guy, I, I just gave the guy $150, you know, and he was so gracious and happy and pleasant and thanking me. And, and it was such a change from what I'm used to there. Like normally you go in, you banter back and forth. You might negotiate a couple of dollars either way on a thing that you want to buy. You exchange your money, you get your goods and then you walk away and that's it. You didn't really have a lot of people that were that gracious, and I find that the people now that they're finally getting back into it, I think maybe appreciate it more. Do you do you agree with that? Yeah, like I have seen, I have seen like the vendors that we've been talking to. A lot of them definitely seem a lot more like sociable, and a lot of them seem a lot more like they'd they kind of enjoy the interactions with customers. Um, so yeah, I have seen that difference too. Yeah. So, you know, I totally agree that the social aspect of your health triangle is important. Uh, I think it's time for a break. Alrighty. And then when we come back, what are we going to talk about? going to talk about why your health triangle is important. All right. We'll be back uh, after a quick break. Alrighty. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about your health triangle. And now we're going to dive more into why is your health triangle important. So the health triangle is a measurement of your overall health. Each of the three component components contributes to your overall well-being and need to be equally balanced. All three sides of the health triangle are interlinked. If one is out of balance, the other two will also be affected. For this reason, those with chronic health issues are at a greater risk of developing mental health problems like anxiety and depression. If you thought physical health was the only thing that mattered, you're not alone. Focusing only on nutrition and exercise is what we learned is what is what we basically learned to stay healthy either from school or the media. But mental and social health have just as important an impact on your overall on your overall health. Neglecting any of the three aspects of health can impact the other two states. So how does it become unbalanced? Think of the health triangle as a structure. 
It's supported by three sides, the physical, the mental, and the social. If the health triangle is balanced, the three sides are equal and the structure maintains a proper triangular form. <clears throat> when one, so one of the sides of the triangle becomes weakened, the overall structure becomes unstable. So when you neglect one aspect of the health triangle, that side becomes weakened. When one side becomes neglected and weakened, you're at a higher risk of experiencing health issues in the other two states. To ensure our health triangle doesn't become unbalanced, we need to focus on improving all three aspects of health, not just one or two. Ensuring we do activities that benefit all three will help us achieve our overall wellness. So what affects your health triangle? So there are many determining factors of health. Some are out of your control, such as genetics. Some are in your control, such as your behavior. Don't get caught up with the ones that you have no control over. Focus on the ones that you can control to promote your health. And here's a list of the de of the determinants of health. When we kind of meant when we meant just I just mentioned is biology, biology and genetics. Not biology. That's just a class I need to take. I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> so inherited conditions are a fundamental determinant of health and can define an individual's biological responses throughout their life. Age and gender inequality can lead to income disparities and differential health access to health care. You also have environment. This includes access to health care and other health services, access to nutritious food and clean water, acceptable living conditions, and having a stable financial income to meet your needs. Then we talk about attitude. This includes attitudes to illness, pain and misfortune, all of which I have a bad attitude towards, your perception of diet, body image, and beliefs, which probably aren't that great for me either. And then we also have behavior. This includes practicing personal self-care, eating a healthy diet regularly, getting consistent physical activity, and avoiding high-risk activities such as smoking and alcohol consumption. And I mean, you got that one at least. Yeah, well, thanks. I got, I got one thing in my favor. There's also technology. Things like fitness trackers can provide insight and, mo and motivate you to be more active. However, overuse of technology can cause eye strain, and, as well as headaches and dry eyes. Sleep problems and other mental health issues can be caused by the use of electronic devices. And finally, um, there's social support networks. This includes the support of family and friends and local support programs. So, of the things that they talk about here, how do you think you fare on this scale of, of um, health determinants? Well, based on biology and genetics, um, our family has not been the healthiest, no. I'll say. I'll, no, we haven't. It appears that, I guess, both sides of the family have had some struggles help. some struggles struggles yes some struggles um i don't think i inhabit too much um but i definitely wouldn't consider myself particularly fit either so it's one of those things where the genetics are outside your control however uh it serves as a warning sign a a, a kind of a cautionary tale um, it's something to keep an eye on. Yep. Uh, there are certain tests that can, you can take, uh, they can do later on in life to see if you're susceptible to certain illnesses and stuff. And there's preventative things you can do. How about our environment? Um, well, I do have health services and such, so. And lots of them because you had like, what, two doctor's appointments in the last two weeks. You know, your doctor, your orthodontist, you see a lot of the doctors. Dentist. I mean, the dentist, yeah. yeah. Yeah, honestly, the one time I went to the doctor yesterday, uh, yesterday, right? Yes. Yesterday, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually thought I had to brush my teeth because I'm just so <laughs> used to that. And it's like, oh wait, nope, not that doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, access to nutritious food and clean water. That's one thing that you're actually pretty good about. You tend to eat. I mean, you you consume a lot of carbs. Yeah. Um, but 
like from a snacky food standpoint, you tend to eat healthy foods, which is which is good. The fact that you like healthy foods is is an important part of staying healthy. Yeah, I actually just had some blackberries and uh, blueberries earlier. Yeah. Um, acceptable living conditions, I'd say. I think we have a sufficient number of cats in the house. Yes. <laughs> yes. Having a stable financial income to meet your needs, I feel we have that. Well, I think Most you got a pretty damn, darn good, <laughs> yeah. excuse me, darn good uh, income yeah. with uh, your chores and your your report cards. Yeah. I guess next up would be my attitude. Um, yes, it's your attitude. You need to work. No, I'm just kidding. Um, illness. Um, I try not to let it get to me. Um, I just take the medicine and still feel miserable, but you know. Well, and that's the thing. Like, if if any, if we've learned anything from this ordeal with braces, it's that you you can endure a lot over time. Yeah. Because braces have been a real challenge for you. Yeah, that pretty much covers the pain aspect. That yeah. was. Well, I haven't had a broken bone that I know of. <laughs> um, I definitely have had a lot done to my mouth and. Yeah, it's been, um, it's definitely been a trip. Yeah. Um, but you know, at this point I've come to expect it. Perception of diet, um, I guess I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you don't eat terrible. I mean, you could probably cut down on the carbs here and there, but you're a teenager. You, you eat better than most teenagers, I can tell you that. Yeah. Body image, I... Say my body image is fine. I'm not. I think it's super... improving. Yeah. Uh, I think when we started this podcast, you probably had some body image issues that we've managed to work through, thankfully. Yeah. At this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm probably never going to look like this. And now I accept it. There you go. Um, and beliefs. Yeah. I think I, that's, that's, that's kind of just tacked on there. Yeah. So um, how about your behavior? Um, practicing personal self-care. Um, I guess I try to do that. Oh. I think you've gotten much better at that. Yeah. You're even painting your nails now. You're doing better taking care of your hair, uh, because mommy and daddy aren't doing it now. Yeah. So that's an improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't have a problem with brushing your teeth and. Now I'm showering every day. Yeah. You're, you're doing everything that you need to be doing right now. I don't think there's anything else that you need to be doing. Uh, healthy diet regularly. I mean, I have... We've to... beat that horse. Yeah, we beat already. that dead horse. Um, constant physical activity. I do not just... Constant, I mean, consistent. Consistent, not, con- not and constant. And I think you are consistent. I mean, you do your, your dance, your just dance stuff. You're getting whatever physical activity that school requires. You're doing your marching band when it's marching band season. So again, I think you're probably on average, maybe a little bit above average for teenagers you're in your, you know, activity group, I guess. Um, and then high risk activities like smoking and alcohol. Well, we need I... to work on that. We got to get you down two packs a day, you know. <laughs> 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 okay. Just kidding. You don't. You don't do yeah. any of that stuff. Yeah. Technology. Um, I mean, I use technology for just dance, so that's yes. something. Yes, and the one thing I think we actually had to discourage you from. Because uh, you have an Apple Watch, and one of the things that you were doing was you were kind of letting that dictate uh, how many steps that you had to take, or how many calories you had to burn, or whatever it was on mainly, your circles. Mainly how many, like, how much exercise I had to do for the day. Right, right. And we've never gone through and calibrated your body measurements to it, so... Uh. Until we do that, you don't want to let the tech... The technology is there as a tool, it's there to help. Uh, in fact, I think it helps people more than hurts people in most cases, but it has to be used right. Like any tool. Yeah. Uh, then I guess support network. Yep. Um, I have supported my family and friends, so that's good. Yep. And I think, yeah, I think, I think for the most part, you're, you're pretty much in line with what you need to keep your health right. And I think your health triangle is probably pretty good. I think for a while there, we may have had some issues with the social side, and we may have had some issues with the the mental side. The physical side, I think you've probably been pretty consistent with. We've been very much on top of that. Yeah. Uh, and I think all things considered, you're doing pretty good from a social side. Although, 
you're not as social as you were, especially with like the kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. But it, we're still kind of come trying to come out of this pandemic at this point. Yeah. Uh, so that's certainly something to look forward to moving, moving forward. Yeah. So we're going to take another quick break. And what are we going to talk about when we come back? We're going to talk about how to maintain a balanced health triangle. Yeah, we'll be right back. All righty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about maintaining, well, our health triangles. And now... <laughs> wow, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, I'm not the best host here. <laughs> I don't really stay on script for the most part. That's Sorry, great. you're getting better with everyone you host. Thanks. So now we're going to talk about how to maintain a balanced health triangle. So as we've stated before, each of the three sides is equally important in maintaining an overall healthy lifestyle and balanced health triangle. If you've only been focusing on your physical well-being, consider improving your mental and social well-being as well. Um, but now we're going to talk about how to maintain your physical health for those of you that don't maintain your physical health. Just for the record, you wrote the notes. I know. Just okay, saying. I get it. I get it. Yeah. You should focus on your mental health. But we're not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about your physical health. <laughs> yeah, that that's a nice jump. <laughs> anyway, so maintaining physical health. So there are various aspects to maintaining your physical health. This includes nutrition and diet, physical activity, hygiene, and even sleep. So here are some examples of how you can improve your physical health. And the first is nutrition and diet. Having a proper, healthy diet is important for energy and growth. It keeps your immune system strong, so you're less likely to get sick. You should also stay hydrated. Women need 9 to 12 cups of fluids, and men need 11 to 15 cups daily. Uh, men are so well, needy, aren't they? <laughs> about a rough estimate, at least. <laughs> so staying hydrated keeps your body functioning properly and helps improve sleep quality. Hydration also helps regulate body temperature, keeps you calm, cleanses your body of fluids and of your body fluids your body fluids of toxins and regulates mood you should also be exercising regular physical activity is important to maintain a healthy lifestyle 30 minutes of daily exercise is recommended it doesn't need to be an intense workout simply going for a walk is beneficial also try to incorporate physical movement throughout your day Taking regular breaks to get up from your desk and walking to get a drink or go to the washroom goes a long way. Then there's sleep. Sleeping seven to nine hours every night will give your body the rest it needs. Well, there's my problem. And it's important to note that um, you can't just do it on the weekends or you have to do it like... It should be every day. Night. It should be consistent. Yes. Although I'm probably also not really on that since I only really sleep during the weekdays and I sleep like five hours on the weekends. Well, yeah, that, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going to bed and waking up at the same time every day can maintain good sleeping habits. Avoid activities that would keep you up before your bedtime, such as using electronic devices. Showering. That's an important one. Yep. Otherwise, it'll affect your social life, too. <laughs> Probably. Showering and washing your hands help to ensure proper hygiene. It helps to keep your body clean and less likely to spread germs and not stink. <laughs> I mean, deodorant, but, like, you that need a helps. ton of it. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, brushing your teeth. We talked about the importance of this already. Brush and floss twice a day. That's a little excessive for me. <laughs> uh, to preserve your dental health. Uh, I'm sure there's dentists out there that are yelling at the screen right now. Yeah. Listening to that. <laughs> uh, this helps maintain your oral hygiene and prevent gum disease. Then there is skin care. Take care of your skin by using sunscreen if you're outdoors. Scum, uh, scum, <laughs> skunk, scum, skunk. Scum, scum screen. <laughs> sunscreen helps protect your skin, lowers the risk of skin cancer, and prevents premature aging. Maybe that's why I feel so old. I don't need <laughs> sunscreen. <laughs> Doctor checkups. Oh, this is another one that I'm not very good with. Uh, yeah. Regular checkups to the doctor help to ensure you are in good health. The doctor will usually monitor blood pressure physical checks, and or other signs of good health. And this this list kind of um, reminds me of something my father used to say, that nobody's useless, you can always serve as a bad example. And I think I'm a bad example for most of these. Mm. Uh, so maybe I'll take some of our own advice moving forward here. Okay, that's good. We're, we're hoping to benefit others. What else do we have? Now we're going into the maintaining mental and emotional health that we promised earlier. So stress from work, school, or relationships can contribute to poor mental health. Therefore, it is important to learn healthy ways to cope with stress. Here are some examples of how to strengthen your mental health. So the first is treat mental illnesses seriously. Treating mental illnesses like physical illnesses is important. Ask friends and family for help or seek out professional help if needed. You should also build resilience. Build resilience by prioritizing connections, fostering healthy self-esteem, and reducing shame. You should also be practicing self-care, basically building awareness of your thoughts and emotions, practicing self-care by regulating your emotions and behaviors. This can include journaling your thoughts, working through your emotions by talking about it, and challenging stressful or anxious situations. Practice mindfulness. This was one we actually did a podcast on a while back. Mm. Practicing mindfulness can help you calm and focus your thoughts. By building awareness, being more open and accepting, and being present in the moment results in a more positive mindset. Increase happiness. Tap into one of the four happiness chemicals, which we're not going to list here, by engaging in hobbies and things you enjoy. Spending time outside, which I don't enjoy, doing something creative, or just listening to music are just a few examples. And then there's physical activity, which clearly looking at me, you can tell I get more than enough of it. <laughs> Ex you <laughs> exercise. You need to stop yourself. <laughs> that helps my mental health. Fair enough. Exercise not only has physical benefits, but can also alleviate stress, anxiety, and any build-up tension. Activities such as yoga, stretching, or your favorite physical activity can be beneficial. And build a support network. Build a positive support network of friends and family that can support, guide, or just enjoy life with you. What else do we have? Now, we're going to talk about how to maintain your social health. Families should work together to eliminate stress and negativity. Strong supportive friendships will increase happiness, self-esteem, and reduce stress. And here are some examples of how to strengthen your men no, social health. So first is to build a support network. Building I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Building a positive support network of friends and family is basically what this consists of. Not Legos? You know, no. It. Okay. No. Having a relationship that is supportive, loving, responsible, and a balance and, pal and, and balanced can contribute to your social health. You should also bond over a common interest. Bond with people by joining a club or community over a common interest or hobby. Building relationships with the with those who enjoy similar interests is a great way to socialize. Attend social events. This is one of my weak points here. Mm. Say yes when invited to social events, or initiate an invitation to your friends and family. Socializing can help build confidence and protect you against the effects of stress. And volunteering. Get involved with the community by volunteering. Volunteering helps you connect with the community, 
build relationships, be positive for your mind and body, and could open new career opportunities. And then take it from here. So to recap, the health triangle consists of three sides. F- physical health, which is your body's ability to function normally. Mental health, your ability to manage thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And your social health, which consists of our relationships and how we communicate with those around us. Start maintaining your health triangle with the following steps, which are identifying areas of the health triangle that you're lacking, that you are lacking in doing well. Identify a few ways to maintain the aspects of the health triangle you are doing well. Identify a few ways to improve the aspects that you're lacking in, and continue to maintain those aspects regularly. If you're looking through this list and are overwhelmed by the amount of effort required to maintain all three aspects, you're not alone. Consider combining activities to promote two or three aspects at a time. For example, if you enjoy running, consider joining a running club. You'll be able to socialize with others that have a common interest while while maintaining your physical and mental health as well. So after going through all of that, what do you think is probably your weakest part of that triangle? I'd say the weakest part would probably have to be my mental at this point. Okay. It can probably bounce back between social and mental, but... Thinking about it now, it's probably more mental at this point. Okay, fair enough. And what do you think you can do to improve that aspect of your health triangle? I guess it would probably be to work more on my thoughts, communicate better with others, and kind of figure out ways to not, well, to work on my mental health and to help me feel better mentally and emotionally, hopefully using some of the steps we've included here. Okay. I think the area that I'm probably lacking in myself is going to be the social side, mainly because I didn't never really picture that as being part of my overall health triangle. Um, And I'm generally not a particularly social person. I tend to keep to myself most of the time outside of immediate family. I don't, I don't have a much, tolerance i think for other people and i think that's gotten my patience level with other people's probably deteriorated rapidly as i got older Mm. um so i I just i don't necessarily want to put myself in situations where uh i could cause problems Mm. because i have a tendency of of i don't know not treating people as well as i probably should when my patience is at its limits uh, and I had an incident um, with my gaming group uh, last week where I wound up getting into a bit of an argument with one of our members because he was the type of person who he loves to argue and everything becomes an argument with him. And it's like, you know, you and I enjoy having our little debates here and there and it's healthy and it's stimulating mentally and stuff. And I think he gets that out of it as well. Um, but there are just, there are times that I get online to play the game and I just am not up for that. And he hit me on one of those nights and pushed the wrong buttons and I wound up snapping on him. So, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, that you kind of, you recognize that you have those tendencies and you try to shelter others from those tendencies because you don't want to say things you can't take back. So Mm -hmm. that's definitely an area that I need to improve on. And I kind of know where the weakness is and my dealing with my trying to, I guess, cope with that weakness is more about not getting worse than it is about getting any better. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tactic of avoidance. And that's probably something that I need to work on. Probably. So we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll get your closing thoughts and any shout-outs. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, I just wanted to stress the importance of the health triangle. Um, and just the fact that all three elements are helpful. 
While yes, you could definitely work on being physically healthy, that doesn't mean that you're going to be healthy. You need to also be mentally healthy because if you don't feel well about yourself or how you treat or how you treat other people or just if you don't have a good self-image of yourself, all the other aspects are eventually going to be affected by it and certainly you're not going to be healthy if you ignore your mental health. And it's the same thing with social health. A lot of people really don't think too much about social health and in a lot of cases social health also can impact your mental and physical and I can definitely see a few ways on if you're not social enough how your mental health can be deeply affected by it and in turn your physical health gets affected. So I guess just try to keep all of them in balance and use what we have on the podcast here to work on that. Okay, I think that was uh, very well said. Uh, before we do go, I do want to once again invite you to subscribe to the podcast. You can get the audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, or you can get video and audio of the podcast listed as Insights into Things, we are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I uh, would also invite you to give us your feedback. Tell us how we're doing. Give us your suggestions for uh, topics for the show. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We do stream six days a week, five days a week. So I keep saying six and that's just a lie. Yeah. We stream five days a week on Twitch. Technically we do do six if we're, if we don't do both recordings during the week. Uh, but you can catch us on Twitch when we're streaming at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, just a side note, if you're an Amazon prime subscriber, you do get a free Twitch, uh, monthly Twitch Prime subscription. If you could throw that our way, we'd appreciate it. Uh, what else do we have? We have Instagram. Did I say Facebook already? Um, I don't know. I don't know either. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. I shouldn't look at two sets of notes here. Yeah. Uh, we're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get everything and much more on our official website at insightsintothings.com and you and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts insights and entertainment hosted by you and mommy and insights into tomorrow our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother sam all right that's it another one in the books bye everyone bye <laughs>